Hey all, Amanda here, and welcome to the 2018 Winter Olympics. For the next two and a half weeks, I'll try to update the results as often as I can, and may even watch a few live events here on YouTube, so keep your eyes peeled to your notification bell. Of course, I'll be cheering for Team Canada, but I'll also give results for the States and England, and if there's anyone watching from another country and want me to keep my eye on how they're doing, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to follow their results as well. Although there are only 15 main events in the Winter Olympics, some events have subcategories, which include a number of disciplines, so I decided for this first video I'd run through some of the basics of each event, covering some of the rules and highlighting some of the things the judges will be looking for in awarding points. This list is alphabetical, so feel free to scrub to different parts of the videos for refreshers on specific events. The main events are as follows. Alpine skiing, biathlon, bobsleigh, cross-country skiing, curling, figure skating, freestyle skiing, ice hockey, luge, Nordic combined, short track speed skating, skeleton, ski jumping, snowboard, and speed skating. Now let's begin. Up first is alpine skiing. This event has many subcategories, each being judged on different disciplines, so in no particular order, we'll start with alpine combined. A traditional combined competition consists of one run of downhill and two runs of slalom, each discipline run on separate days. The winner is the skier with the fastest aggregate time. Next we have the downhill, whereas other alpine skiing events, slalom, giant slalom, super giant slalom, and combined, emphasize turn and technique, downhill emphasizes the six components of technique, courage, speed, risk, physical condition, and judgment, and that's according to the FIS, International Ski Competition Rules. Athletes must have an aerodynamically efficient tuck position, to minimize drag and increase speed. Next we have the giant slalom, which is an alpine skiing and alpine snowboarding discipline. It involves skiing between sets of poles, known as gates, spaced at greater distances to each other than in a slalom, but in less than a super G, and we'll get to those. Giant slalom and slalom make up the technical events in alpine ski racing. This category separates them from speed events of Super G and Downhill. The technical events are normally composed of two runs held on different courses on the same ski run. Next we have the Slalom. Again, the Slalom is an alpine skiing and alpine snowboarding discipline involving skiing between poles or gates. These are spaced more closely together than those in Giant Slalom, Super Giant Slalom, and Downhill necessitating quicker and shorter turns. Next we have the Super Combined. A modified version, the Super Combined, is a speed race, downhill or Super G, and only one run of slalom with both portions scheduled on the same day. And lastly we have the Super G. The Super Giant Slalom, or Super G, is a racing discipline of alpine skiing. Along with the faster downhill, it is regarded as a speed event, in contrast to the technical events Giant Slalom and Slalom. Much like downhill, the other of the two speed events in alpine skiing, a Super G course consists of widely set gates that racers must pass through. The course is set so that the skiers must turn more than in downhill, though the speeds are still much higher than in Giant Slalom, hence the name. Each athlete only has one run to clock the best time. In the Olympics, Super G courses are usually set on the same slopes as the downhill, but with a lower starting point. The men and women will both compete in all of these disciplines, and we also have a mixed event called the Parallel Mixed Team Event. In this brand new event, teams will consist of four skiers of the same country, two men and two women. Teams will face off in parallel slalom races against each other simultaneously, side by side. Times are irrelevant. The skier who crosses the finish line first is declared the winner. If one or both competitors fall, the skier who made it further down is declared the winner. Up next we have the biathlon, another event with many disciplines. In no particular order, we have the 10K and 20K individual, 
The 20K individual is the oldest biathlon event, and the distance is skied over five laps. The biathlete shoots four times at any shooting lane in the order of prone, standing, prone, standing, totaling 20 targets. For each missed target, a fixed penalty time, usually one minute, is added to the skiing time of the biathlete. Competitor starts her staggered, normally by 30 seconds. Next we have the pursuit. In a pursuit, biathlete starts are separated by their time differences from a previous race, most commonly a sprint. The contestant crossing the finish line first is the winner. The distance of 12.5k for men and 10k for women is skied over five laps with four shooting bouts, two prone, two standing, in that order, and each miss means a penalty loop of 150 meters. To prevent awkward and or dangerous crowding of the skiing loops over capacity at the shooting range, World Cup pursuits are held with only the top 60 ranking biathletes after the preceding race. The biathletes shoot on a first come first serve basis at the lane corresponding to the position they arrived at for all shooting bouts. Next we have the mass start, and in the mass start, all biathletes start at the same time and the first across the finish line wins. This is a 15k for men and a 12.k for women. The distance is skied over five laps. Again, there are four bouts of shooting, two prone, two standing, in that order, with the first shooting bout being at the lane corresponding to the competitor's bib number, the rest of the shooting bouts being on a first come, first serve basis. As in sprint and pursuit, competitors must ski a one 150 meter penalty loop for each miss. Here again, to avoid unwanted congestion, World Mass Cup starts are held with only the top 30 ranking athletes on a start line, half that of the pursuit, as here all contestants start simultaneously. And lastly, we have the relay. Relay teams consist of four biathletes, each who ski 7.5 kilometers for the men's and 6 kilometers for the women. Each leg is skied over three laps with two shooting rounds one prone, one standing. For every round of five targets, there are eight bullets available, though the last three can only be single loaded manually, one at a time, from spare round holders, or bullets deposited by the competitors into trays or into the mat at the firing line. If after eight bullets there are still misses, one 150 penalty loop must be taken for each missed target remaining. The first leg participants start all at the same time, as in cross-country skiing relays, each athlete of a team must touch the team's next leg participant to perform a valid changeover. On the first shooting range of the first leg, the participant must shoot in the lane corresponding to their bib number. Then for the remaining of the relay, the relay team shoots on a first-come, first-serve basis. In addition to those events, we also have mixed events which consist of the mixed relay, the most recent addition to a number of biathlon competition variants, the mixed relay is similar to the ordinary relay, but the teams are composed of two women and two men. Legs one and two are done by the women, legs three and four by the men. The women's legs are 6K, and the men's legs are 7.5K, as in ordinary relay competitions. And we also have the single mixed relay, in which a team consists of one man and one woman, each running two 3-kilometer legs, except the last leg, where the man completes 4.5 kilometers for a total of 13.5k. Next up is the bobsleigh, the rules of which are pretty straightforward, just not to be confused with the skeleton or the luge. In bobsleigh, teams of two or four teammates make timed runs down a narrow, twisting, banked ice track in a gravity-powered sleigh. The time runs are combined to calculate the final score. We also have what's called a monobob. Unlike the two and four person bobsled teams, only one person is responsible for the sled in a monobob. The athlete pushes, drives, and brakes the 365 pound sled down the track, reaching speeds in excess of 80 miles per hour. Women also compete in the monobob and two woman bobsleigh. Up next is cross country skiing, an event with several grueling disciplines. First up is the 15K individual. 
Skiers begin the individual events by departing the starting gate one at a time every 30 seconds. On the course, slower skiers are expected to yield to their faster competitors as they are overtaken, but no matter when a skier crosses the finish line, it's the time they accrue that determines the winner. Next is the 15K plus 15K Skiathon. The Skiathon is a test for athletes in both cross-country skiing techniques, classical, and freestyle. It folds these two racing styles into one brutal event. The men race back-to-back -back 15K and back-to-back 7.5K for the women, skiing the first half in classical technique and the second using freestyle. Next is the 4x10K Relay. The first two legs of the relay are skied using classical technique, while the final two are raced using freestyle, requiring teams to carefully set their team lineup. With no way to carry or pass a baton to the next skier up while holding the ski poles, cross-country athletes tag their teammates inside an exchange zone to make the switch between legs of the race. Next, we have the 50K Mass Start, officially known as the Men's 50K and the Women's 30K Classical Race. The start lists for these two events include as many as 15 athletes, which are held on the final day of the Olympic Games, serving as an exhaustive showcase of endurance after 16 days of Nordic competition. Next is Cross Country Cross Free. Competitors, skiing freestyle and departing every 10 to 30 seconds, start with individual time trials. The quickest 30 then move on to three semifinals of 10 athletes each, and the first two of those, plus the next four fastest finishers, qualify for the final, in which all ten participants set off at the same time. Next, we have the Sprint 1.5K. A qualification race opens this event, with skiers attacking the course one at a time, and the top 30 advancing on to the quarterfinals. Things get interesting in the quarterfinals, when the field is divided into groups of six across five heats. A total of ten skiers, the first and second place finishers in the quarterfinal heats, plus two lucky losers, will automatically advance to the semifinals. Lucky losers are those skiers with the two best times from the quarterfinal heats, but did not finish in the top two of their race. In the two semifinal heats, the two top finishers automatically advance to the final with a shot at winning a medal. Two more lucky losers, those skiers with fifth and sixth fastest semifinal times also advance to the finals. And lastly, we have the team sprint. Teams of two race nearly seven miles for the men and five miles for the women, alternating laps for a total of six laps in the team sprint. The event begins with two semifinal races, the top two finishing teams advance to the finals, along with six more lucky losers. The next event is curling, and I predict the Canadian men and Canadian women will be taking home gold. Curling is a sport in which players slide stones on a sheet of ice towards a target area, which is segmented into four concentric circles. Two teams, each with four players, take turns sliding heavy, polished granite stones, also called rocks, across the ice curling sheets towards the house, a circular target marked on the ice. Each team has eight stones. The purpose is to accumulate the highest score for the game. Points are scored for the stones resting closest to the center of the house at the conclusion of each game, which is completed when both teams have thrown all their stones. A game usually consists of eight or ten ends. The curler can induce a curved path by causing the stone to slowly turn as it slides, and the path of the rock may be further influenced by two sweepers with brooms who accompany it as it slides down the sheet, using the brooms to alter the state of the ice in front of the stone. Sweeping a rock makes it curl less and decreases the friction that slows the rock down. A great deal of strategy and teamwork go into choosing the ideal path and placement of a stone for each situation, and the skills of the curlers determine how close to the desired result the stone will achieve. This gives curling its nickname, Chess on Ice. Up next is figure skating, another event with several disciplines. Up first is the individual. Single skaters perform jumps, spins, step sequences, spirals, and other moves in the field as part of their competitive programs. 
Short programs at the senior and junior levels are 2 minutes and 50 seconds long. Skaters are penalized if they skate over that time limit. Skaters must perform certain required elements as part of their program. These elements have varied over the years. The short program is more exacting of the programs because all the required elements must be completed. Next we have free skating. Free skating consists of a well-balanced program of free skating elements such as jumps, spins, steps, and other linking movements executed with a minimum of two-footed skating in harmony with music of the competitor's choice. The free skating programs are four and a half minutes for men, four minutes for women. Skaters are allowed a time margin of plus or minus 10 seconds and are penalized for going outside of that range. Next in the mixed events, we have ice dancing mixed. Ice dance differs from pair skating by having different requirements for lifts. Couples must perform spins as a team in a dance hold and throws and jumps are disallowed. Typically, partners are not supposed to be separated by more than two arms lengths. Another distinction between ice dance and other skating disciplines is the use of music in the performance. In ice dancing, dancers must always skate to music with a definite beat or rhythm. Singles and pair skaters more often skate to the melody and phrasing of their music rather than its beat. This is severely penalized in ice dance. There are two segments in ice dance competition, the short dance and the free dance. The free dance is the most heavily weighted in the scoring and is used in a tiebreaker. In short dance, this segment of the competition combines features of the discontinued compulsory and the original dances. Each team performs a required pattern from one of the compulsory dances for about one half of the dance, then performs its own choreography with some required elements to a theme or rhythm specified by the ISU. Skaters are free to choose their own music so long as the tempo is appropriate. We also have the free dance. It's usually the second and final part of the competition to be contested after the short dance. In the free dance, teams are free to choose their own rhythms, program themes, and therefore music. Creativity is also strongly encouraged. Since 1998, dancers have been required to include certain elements in their free dances, including step sequences, lifts, dance spins, and multi-rotational turns called twizzles. Senior level free dances are 4 minutes long, plus or minus 10 seconds, and usually include multiple music cuts and tempos that help bring variety to the routine. We also have the Mixed NOC Team Mixed. These are youth Olympic game teams consisting of athletes representing different national Olympic committees. The concept of mixed NOCs was introduced at the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics in which athletes from different nations would compete in the same team. And lastly, we have the Paris Mixed. This word is distinguished from ice dancing and single skating by elements unique to pair dancing, including overhead lifts, twist lifts, death spirals, and throw jumps. Pair teams also perform the elements of single skating in unison. The discipline requires similar technique and timing on all elements of the performance in order to create an impression of two skating as one. Next up is freestyle skiing, another event with several disciplines. The first discipline is aerials, in which aerialists ski off a 2-4 to four meter jump that propels them up to 6 meters in the air, which can be up to 20 meters above the landing height given the landing slope. Once in the air, aerialists perform multiple flips and twists before landing on a 34 to 39 degree inclined landing hill about 30 meters in length. Aerial skiing is a judged sport and competitors receive a score based on jump takeoff, which is 20%, jump form, which is 50%, and landing, which is 30%. A degree of difficulty is then factored in for a total score. Skiers are judged on a cumulative score of two jumps, and these scores do not generally carry over to the next round. Next we have the halfpipe. Introduced in the Olympics in 2014, competitors perform a series of tricks while going down the pipe. Next up are the moguls. 
Moguls are a series of bumps on a trail formed when skiers push the snow into mounds or piles as they execute short radius turns consisting of one timed run of free skiing on a steep, heavily moguled course, stressing technical turns, aerial maneuvers, and speed. Next up we have Ski Cross. In a time trial or qualification round, every competitor skis down the course, which is built to encompass both naturally occurring terrain and artificial features like jumps, rollers, or banks. After the time trial, the fastest 32 skiers, fastest 16 if not 32 competitors, compete in a knockout series of rounds of four. A group of four skiers start simultaneously and attempt to reach the end of the course. The first two to cross the finish line will advance to the next round. At the end, the big final and small final rounds determine the first to fourth and fifth to eighth places respectively. Next up is the slope style, in which athletes ski or snowboard down a course, including a variety of obstacles, including rails, jumps, and other terrain park features. Points are scored for amplitude, originality, and quality of tricks. Slope style tricks fall mainly into four categories. Spins, grinds, grabs, and flips. In competition, athletes are judged on air, the height of the jump, DD, degree of difficulty of the tricks, execution, how well the athletes perform the tricks, and overall, the whole package, including the athlete's personal style. Up next is ice hockey, and again I predict that the Canadian men's and Canadian women's team are going to come home with the gold. Ice hockey is played on a hockey rink. During normal play, there are six players per side on the ice at any time, one of them being the goaltender, each of whom is on ice skates. The objective of the game is to score goals by shooting a hard, vulcanized rubber disc, known as the puck, into the opponent's net, which is placed on the opposite end of the rink. The players use their stick to pass or shoot the puck. Between the six players on the ice, they are typically divided into three forwards, two defensemen, and a goaltender. The term skater is typically used to describe all players who are not goaltenders. The forward positions consist of a center and two wingers, a left wing and a right wing. Forwards often play together as units or lines, with the same three forwards always playing together. The defensemen usually stay together as a pair generally divided between left and right. Left and right side wingers or defensemen are generally positioned as such based on the side in which they carry their stick. A substitution of an entire unit at once is called a line change. Teams typically employ alternate sets of forward lines and defensive pairings when shorthanded or on a power play. The goaltender stands in a usually blue semicircle called the crease in the defensive zone, keeping pucks from going in. The three major rules of play in ice hockey that limit the movement of the puck are offside, icing, and the puck going out of play. A player is offside if he enters the opponent's zone before the puck itself. Under many situations, a player may not ice the puck, meaning shoot the puck all the way across both the center line and the opponent's goal line. The puck goes out of play whenever it goes past the perimeter of the ice rink, onto the player's benches, over the glass, or onto the protective netting above the glass. And a stoppage of play is called by the officials using whistles. It also does not matter if the puck comes back onto the ice surface from those areas, as the puck is considered dead once it leaves the perimeter of the rink. A professional game consists of three periods of 20 minutes, the clock running only when the puck is in play. Next up is the luge. A luge is a small one- or two-person sled on which one slays face up and feet first. Steering is done by flexing the sled's runners with the calf on each leg or exerting opposite shoulder pressure to the seat. The luge events consist of the singles and doubles for men, singles and doubles for women, and the team doubles and mixed team events. Up next is Nordic Combined. Nordic Combined is a winter sport in which athletes compete in cross-country skiing and ski jumping. First up is the individual ski jumping. 
Competition starts with one competition jump from a normal or large hill. Later on that same day, the 10K cross-country race takes place. The winner starts at a 0-0 time, and all other athletes start with time disadvantages according to their jumping score. The first to cross the finish line is the winner. Next up is the Sprint K120. I wasn't able to find details for the individual sprints, however a team sprint event is coming up. Next is the Team 4x5K. One team consists of four athletes who have one competition jump each. The total score of all four athletes determines the time disadvantage for the start of the ensuing 5K cross-country race. The first team to cross the finish line wins. And lastly in the mixed event, we have the Nordic Mixed Team NH3x3.3K. In Team Sprint, teams consist of two athletes each. In the ski jumping part, every athlete makes one competition jump like in the individual Gunderson or team event formats and the time behind for the start of the successive cross-country race. The team to arrive first at the finish line wins the competition. On a side note, as of the early 2010s, the International Ski Federation sanctioned no women's competitions. However, it was decided in early November 2016 that women's competitions were to be established at the Olympic Winter Games in 2022. Next up is short track speed skating. In competitions, multiple skaters, typically between 4 and 6, skate on an oval ice track with a length of 111 meters. The rink itself is 60 meters long by 30 meters wide, which is the same size as an international sized ice hockey rink. Short track speed skating is a sister sport to long track speed skating. This event has the 500 meter dash for men and women, the 1000 meter dash for men and women, and the 1500 meter dash for men and women. We also have a 5000 relay for men and a 3000 relay for women. In relay races, each team has four skaters who can take turns freely by tagging. All skaters of each team must take at least one turn and only one exchange is allowed in the final three laps. Usually, the outgoing skater pushes the incoming skater to help the teammate gain speed. Up next is the skeleton. The skeleton is a winter sliding sport in which a person rides a small sleigh, known as the skeleton bobsleigh, down a frozen track while lying face down. Unlike other sliding sports of bobsleigh and the luge, the race always involves single riders. Like bobsleigh, but unlike luge, the race begins with a running start from the opening gate at the top of the course. The sport and the sled were named for the bony appearance of the sleigh. Next up, ski jumping. The ski jumping venue consists of the jumping ramp, or in-run, the takeoff table, and a landing hill. Each jump is evaluated according to the distance traveled and the style performed. The distance score is related to the construction point, also known as the K point, which is a line drawn in the landing area and serves as a target for the competitors to reach. The score of each judge evaluating the style can reach a maximum of 20 points. The slopes are composed of the built-in ramp, or in-run, and the hill, natural or artificial, and are classified according to the distance that the competitor travels in the air between the end of the table and the landing. Each hill has a construction point, or K point, which serves as the target that the competitors must reach. The classifications of hills are as follows. A small hill has a construction point of 45 meters, and a hill size of 50 meters. A medium hill has a construction point between 45 and 74 meters with a hill size between 50 to 84 meters. A normal hill has a construction point between 75 and 99 meters with a hill size of 85 to 109 meters. A large hill has a construction point of over 100 meters with a hill size of over 110 meters while the ski flying hill has over 170 meters for a construction point with a hill size of over 185 meters. Ski jumping events for men 
are the K120 individual, the K120 team, and the K90 individual. The women's events are the K90 individual, and we also have a mixed team event. Up next is snowboard. Snowboard racing is a form of snowboarding where competitors attempt to obtain the fastest time down a course. Snowboard racing can be done against the clock or by two or more competitors racing in a head-to-head -head format. The first of these disciplines are the Giant Parallel Slalom. The Parallel Giant Slalom event includes two evenly spaced courses, 10 to 15 meters apart, with vertical distances of 20 to 27 meters between turning gates, allowing speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. Once qualifications are complete, racers are placed in a head-to-head -head knockout format, starting with 16 athletes and moving to a final race for first and second place. Next up is the halfpipe. The competitors start individually from the top of the halfpipe. The halfpipe is a semicircular ditch or purpose-built ramp that is usually on a downhill slope between 8 to 22 feet deep. Competitors perform tricks while going from one side to the other and while in the air above the sides of the pipe. The halfpipe discipline is scored by judges with one overall impression score based on the following criteria. Execution of tricks, variety of tricks, difficulty, pipe use, and amplitude. Up next is the parallel slalom. Boarders race downhill through sets of gates that force extremely tight and quick turns spaced 8 to 15 meters apart, requiring plenty of technical skill while racing against an opponent in the other course. Up next is slope style. Athletes ski or snowboard down a course including a variety of obstacles including rails, jumps, and other terrain park features. Points are scored for amplitude, originality, and quality of tricks. And lastly, we have the snowboard cross. In snowboard cross, four snowboard racers start simultaneously atop an inclined course. The racers go over a series of features while trying to reach the finish line first. We also have the mixed event, Team Ski Snowboard Cross. Team Snowboard Cross is a relatively new event. U.S. Snowboard requested it to be part of the Winter Olympics starting in 2018. And finally, the last event is speed skating. Speed skating is a competitive form of ice skating in which the competitors race against each other in traveling a certain distance on skates. Types of speed skating are long track speed skating, short track speed skating, and marathon speed skating. The men's events consist of a 500 meter dash, a 1000 meter dash, a 1500 meter dash, a 5000 meter dash, and a 10,000 meter dash. The women's events include a 500 meter dash, a 1000 meter dash, a 1500 meter dash, a 3000 meter dash, and a 5000 meter dash. Both men and women compete in a mass start and a team pursuit. There are variations on the mass start races. Among them are elimination races, in which one or more competitors are eliminated at fixed points during the course, simple distance races, which may include preliminary knockout races, endurance races with time limits instead of a fixed distance, points races, and individual pursuits. The team pursuit has two teams race at the same time, starting at a line in the middle of the straightaway. One team starts on each side of the track. Only the inner lane is used, and the distance is eight laps for men and six for women. We also have a mixed event called the Mixed NOC Team Sprint. The NOC is the National Olympic Committees. Athletes from different nations compete in the same team. So there you have it, a breakdown of the 2018 Winter Olympic Games. I hope that helps shed some light on what you can be watching for as you cheer your country to victory. So there you have it, a breakdown of the 2018 Winter Olympic Games. I hope that helps shed some light on what you can be watching for as you cheer your country to victory. Remember to look for regular updates on how the athletes are doing and where the rankings stand, as well as the occasional live stream, I hope. So until next time, 
Enjoy the games wherever you are, and go Team Canada!